Hello, hello. Welcome to A Dreamer's Experience, Conquer the Chaos. My name is Sean Laurie, and as a father and four and an entrepreneur, I want to give you guys different insights and tools each week from either myself, my wife, or others that will not only help you as an individual, but also as a parent, conquer the chaos. So guys, as you guys see, I'm not with my better half today. Um, you know, I'm letting her chill, deal with the kids a little bit for me. Um, I just wanted to, you know, have a sit down with, with this great guy over here, um, Coach Younger, as they, as they call him. Um, <laughs> and um, man, I, I'm I'm super excited just because I've been watching what he's what he's done for uh, from afar, and so I thought this would be great just for um, people to kind of see what he's doing, what he has going on, and just for those that that have athletes as well. You know, um, have kids that's that's athletes, and they might have certain questions or certain thought process. So, um, how you doing, though, man? How's everything? Man, I'm uh, first off, Sean. Just want to say thank you, you and your wife, for for having me on. Um, it's 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 definitely a pleasure. We've been communicating for a while, and I'm just excited to be to be on here. But um, everything's been going great. Just you know, getting gearing up for this uh, this 2022 season, and just you know, trying to balance everything, get everything aligned in regards to like family and the football stuff. So it's, everything's going really great. But I appreciate you having me on board. Oh, yeah, I love it, man. I love it. So I like to do a little icebreaker. Um, okay. and, and, and I know, you know, I know you be recruiting. I know you can see the talent right? yeah. um, and people. So my question is, would you rather as a coach um, have a player that has amazing talent, that has amazing talent, but has zero discipline? Right. Mm -hmm. Zero. So you, you might, you know, you tell them not to do something. They still doing the same mistakes. Um, yeah. Or would you rather have a player that has average talent? But has an amazing work ethic. That's uh, that's a that that's a tricky one. I mean, I mean because uh, as a junior college football coach, yeah, um, it's kind of like it's 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 sort of our job to get those reclamation projects where you got guys that have a ton of talent, but maybe didn't quite you know find the discipline in order to put themselves in a situation to go and play at the four year level. So. Um, that's that's a tough one. I, I think just because I, I love a challenge and, mm -hmm. you know, I love to be able to make an impact in, in people's lives. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I think the easy way, the easy route was would, would be to say, you know, I'll take a guy with average talent and a ton of discipline. Mm -hmm. But for me, I, 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 want, I want to help. Like, I, I think being a football coach, uh, you're in the business of helping mold and develop people. So, you know, I would I would. I would take it as a challenge to get that guy that has a ton of talent, but no discipline and try to help cultivate that discipline for him to help him grow and develop and be able to like, you know, hone in on all of his talents and be able to use it and utilize it. Um, but creating a, a disciplinary foundation in order to be able to make it happen. So I would probably lean that way. I know that's not the, the typical answer, but I, that's what probably what, what I would do. Um, just because, again, I, I love the challenge of being able to help and impact young men's lives, especially, uh, you know, and I and I like to impact all young men's lives, regardless of the talent level. But, you know, you always see those young men and, and, or, or young women with a ton of talent um, that just didn't quite get that foundational discipline, whether at home or with the previous programs or whatever the case may be. So getting those young men or young women and, and being able to impact their lives and be able to help set some disciplinary guidelines and foundation, um, that's that's what ultimately, you know, that's where you get the ultimate success. Yeah, you know, we can go and win a million games, but at the end of the day, like, how many lives have you impacted and helped, you know, or how many young young men and young women have you impacted and helped them reach their full potential? That's kind of what I, what I kind of, what I dictate as being a successful coach or not. So, I would take the guy with, with a ton of talent, no discipline, and try to help him, um, you know, kind of build that disciplinary foundation. I love it, man. I love it. Um, I, I think we had a little static, so I apologize, y'all. I, I don't know my we look. I'm I'm in Texas right now. He's in Cali, so it's not gonna always be perfect, guys. Oh, it was um, it was it was it was going in and out. You, you couldn't hear me. No, no, no. I can hear you. Okay. It's just literally when you're talking for whatever reason, it's like a, a static only when you talk. Like, oh, like, they, like they don't want you to share these gems right now. So. <laughs> no. well, hopefully it got hopefully it got the gist of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, I love it though. And and I mean, right, if we're being honest, a lot of times talent will outweigh anything else too, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh man, they get they got kicked out five different schools, but 
man, they talented. Let's try to make yeah. it work. That's just yeah. what it is. But I do also like the fact that it almost sounds like you're wanting to work with either one and be yeah. able to match out, you yep. know, yep. Uh, their their talent. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, like I said, uh, but, and I also take pride in, like, finding the young men that don't have a ton of talent, but very disciplined, very, you know, hardworking, and being able to maximize his potential as well. It's like, yeah, you you, you may not, you may have not been given these God gifts of size, speed, athleticism, but you work your tail off. So let's, let's cultivate that and let's, let's help you reach your full potential. At the end of the day, that's what our goal, that's what our goals are as football coaches or as mentors in these young men lives is to help them reach their full potential, regardless of where it is. Like I tell guys this all the time, everybody's not going to go to division one out of our program. But um, if you can reach your full potential, you're going to look at wherever God placed you in regards to your talent. So, um, yeah, man, so I, I would love to work with either or. But, I mean, you gave a, a – I had to give an answer, so that was the answer. No, no, I, I, I like that. I like that. Um, So what, just so people do know a little bit about you, like how did you get on this – you know, you're, you're a father, you're a husband, you're a coach, and like you said, trying to balance all these different things. How did you get to this point where, you know, you're doing what you're doing? Well, um, I've always had a – I've always been a person like, you know, kind of been like in a role of leadership just from a young age, playing Pop Warner football. I tell my players this all the time. I was always the kid in the front of the line leading the little beat the pad cheers and all that stuff before we come out to the games. Um, but how I got into coaching, um, I was – I was at Lynx University, and uh, I was playing football um, at Lynx University. Got done there and came back home and decided I wanted to, you know, help my little brothers. So we moved um, to a city that was nearby my hometown in Oakland. We moved to the city, the city in Alameda. And my younger brothers, they started playing for the high school. So um, I was like, what the heck? You know, I, you know, I want to go out and help coach. I was done with my college ball. Um, so I went out there and helped coach with the freshman team over at Alameda High School. And then from there, I just I just kind of got hooked. I was at Alameda for six years um, from Alameda High School. I went to Oak Grove High School in San Jose, California. I was there for three years. Had a real, I had a ton of success there. We won CCS Championship my first year there. Um, and then from there, I, was, I got um, another opportunity at Foothill College. It was my first college opportunity. Um, and uh, 2019, we had the first undefeated season in school history. Um, after I did two years at Foothill, then, of course, we had the COVID year. And then things just kind of start materializing. And then I took a job over at San Francisco City College. Um, we went 13-0, and won the state championship, had a really successful year there, one of the best years in, in the program history. And that's a very illustrious program. Yeah. Um, and then after that season, kind of, you know, Foothill came back into the picture, offered me the defensive coordinator position. Um, I felt like it was, you know, where I was, where I'm, where I'm at in my coaching career. It was, it was the time for me to kind of jump to a coordinating position and out of a position, uh, just a position coach. Um, so I took the job back at Foothill, and, you know, that's kind of where we're at now. Um, throughout that entire football journey, I met my wife, Emily, um, we have four beautiful children, Brooklyn, Braylon, Bailey, and Bo, all bees, um, after dad, of course. Um, yeah, they, they, my, they're my foundation, man. Like my, my wife is uh, like, I, I tell people this all the time. I, I don't know where I'll be in regard to my coaching career or just who I am as a man today without my wife, um, and her support and the support of my children. Um, this coaching job is, 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 uh, it's very demanding. Um, yeah. regard to like the time that you have to put into it, especially if you want to be successful. Um, but my family, they make a ton of sacrifices for me. And I, you know, I can't thank them enough for kind of where we are as a as a football family. So yeah, I'm, you know, I'm extremely thankful and, and blessed to be, to have like such a strong support system with them. Like they don't miss games. Um, they, they're like my kids, they're like during the games, they're always super engaged. My wife, She's super critical during during the game. She'll she'll be like on me like during the games. Like I could hear her in the back. And I there were times during the season, my wife is in the stands and she's like, 
you guys got to lock it down. And just like giving me a ton of criticism and like, or whatever. And I go, I go to my DB unit, like, Hey, y'all hear my wife. Like you guys think that I'm tough on you. You hear what she's saying. We got to turn up. So yeah, man, I just, you know, I, I really, I truly feel blessed to be in the position that yeah. I am. Um, with, with, like I said, with the support that I have for my wife and, and, you know, and my kids, they, they make a ton of sacrifices in order for us to do what we do. So, um, yeah, that's kind of like my life story in, in regards to like football and my family and kind of where we are right now. It's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's a lot of sacrifices, but we, um, we've been winning a lot, man. So that's, right. that's, <laughs> that makes it a lot easier for sure. Yeah. yeah. No, that, that's a beautiful thing. And what you said too, I think a lot of times, you know, um, I think that's key when, when you're, you know, entrepreneur, coaching, whatever it is, when you're living out your purpose, your dream, right? It's so key to have that foundation, right? And when your other half is really writing for you, because the same thing you said, same thing for my wife, right? Like people don't understand, like they, like I'm sure the same thing for you. They see you like, oh, coach, you doing this, you doing that. You're like, man, but you don't understand the missus back home is holding it down. Yes. You know? And so that's a beautiful thing. And I have four kids as well. So I yep. definitely can relate to literally everything you just said right there. It's not, it's not easy at all. So, um, yeah. so and um, kudos, man, my wife, like I tell people this, like as, as many, all the wins that, that I get, it's the, my wife, her record, her overall record is the same as mine. Cause you know, none of this, like I said, man, none of this stuff, this, you know, this podcast conquer the chaos. It don't happen without your better half. Like yeah, her going down the fort, making sure the house is, you know, the house is in order when I come home after a long practice, a long days, like yeah. that stuff goes a, a long way. Yeah. For not only like physical health, but mental health, like all that stuff. And even getting the, those criticisms and coming home and understanding, like there's a standard that we have to perform at. And I tell my, D, my, my unit, there's a standard that we have to perform at or else like, I don't care about the criticism outside the outside yeah. noise and what people say, like, I get the most criticism from home. I tell, and I tell my unit that I said, listen, like, like there's like, I don't think there's a bigger critic in the world than my wife. Like I come home and if we don't play what, like it was one game, we had five interceptions, but we like, we had five picks in one game, oh, but man. we dropped, but, but we dropped one. And then the other team, they scored a touchdown on us too. So, and I was just like the whole ride home. She was like, yeah, but like, you guys could have had six and then you gave up a touch. Oh my gosh. Like what do I have to do? But 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 again, it's it's is that that you know, and I'm sure it's the same with you, is is those criticisms and that and that love and that honesty that helps continue to push us and push us forward to where it's like, hey, let's continue to raise the standards. So I, you know, I, I, I give my wife a ton of credit, you know. Like none of this stuff happens without without them and they're they're our they're a vital uh, component in, in, in everything, in right. everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. Even though, you know, you, you get annoyed with what they're saying. You're oh, like, dude, I know, yes. I know, I know they right. Number one, number two, you like, <laughs> you, yeah, even, even though you know, you like, man, you know what? But at the same time you like, but if they didn't care, they yeah. wouldn't say these things, you know what yeah. I mean? And that's what I say in the back. Like they yep. know what we're capable of, Yeah, you know? Yep. So that's why they be grilling. You like, man, but then if they wasn't, then yeah. I was like, damn, so you don't care. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like, what's going on? Yeah, so and it, it's crazy because, like, my wife is not a huge sports fan. Like, she, I mean, she liked the Warriors and she liked the Raiders, but it's it's just naturally because I'm a huge sports yeah. sports. But yeah. she's not invested. But in, when, in regard to, like, the teams that I'm coaching, she's locked in. Like, it's yeah. – during the game, it's not like go walk around. No, she's, like, following what's going on. Like, yeah. like – and it's funny because I like when my other family comes, they'll like I'll talk to my uncle. He'd be like, "Yeah, Emily was in the stands just saying that you guys should do this." She don't know her football talk, but she swears she just you know she she has all the adjustments. Like she knows everything. We should have put this guy here. So yeah, it's a it's a beautiful thing, man. I, I'm blessed to have her in my life. And yeah, I just want to continue to continue to ride this wave, man. Seriously. I, I, I love it. And it, it made me think too, actually, um, cause I know you have your kids and stuff like that. Do you want your son? How many sons do you have? One or two? Two, two. two. I have Bo and Braylon, Braylon oh. and Bo. So do you want, do you want your sons to play football? Um, yeah. Do you, would you, would you be okay with your sons playing football? And is that, 
for for those parents that are concerned, right? Especially with yeah. football. Um, what is your take on that? I know you're a coach and stuff, but just as you know, especially the moms or even some of the dads that have concerns, understandably. Yeah. One, I guess, do you want your your sons playing? And two, what do you think about the safety in the state of football? Yeah, so um, absolutely. I, I, I'm like my wife and I. We're gonna let our sons play, um, and we've talked about like putting a plan together that we feel is the best way in order to for them to develop in the, in the best way possible in order to you know prevent injuries as much as possible. But I mean, it's a sport and it's a physical sport. But like every sport, you know, you soccer is a is a physical sport. You can get you can get injured in, in a ton of different sports. But um, and we want to provide our children with a platform to play multiple sports. My son also plays baseball. He also uh, my daughter, they're playing soccer. So like we're going to introduce them to a lot of sports and then whatever sport they gravitate to, then we're going to support that. But naturally, because I'm a football coach, I know my sons are going to gravitate to the sport of football. So, um, yeah, we're, we're going to allow them to play. Um, for us and just our philosophy, we don't want them to play tackle football too early and not because of like the physical, the physical, uh, the physicality of, of being young and, and hitting, but more or less like we think that flag is a at this point because my son is six and my other son is two. So our six year old, we just think that flag football right now is the best way for him to hone in on his skills and kind of just learn to love the game of football and not add the contact component of it too early. Yeah. Um, because we just want them to, to, to just understand how to avoid, uh, like, you know, catch the ball, like doing the, the basic details. Like right now, I don't want him to, you know, it's too early to be talking about tackling and yeah. you know, blocking. Like right now it's just run, catch, tag, chase, cover, like the basic fundamentals of football. Um, and in regards to like the, the, the current, the safety of football, I think, I think with the way technology is continuing to evolve and the more data that, that we're, we're continuing to gather in regard to the game of football that, you know, it's just going to continue to get safer and safer. Now, again, it's a contact sport with a bunch of moving pieces at very high velocities. You get big time collisions a lot of times, but I think the way the game um, is continuing to be governed um, and how they're governing, governing it in regards to the rules is becoming safer and safer. Now, back when I played, you have bl blind side b blocks. You know, you come across the middle, those backers will smoke. I was a receiver. You come across the middle, those backers will smoke. You have, you have players like Heinz Ward. Will, yeah. Well, he'll, like, it'll be a running play. Heinz Ward will come and blind side a DB or a linebacker. You can't do those things anymore. And I think that really eliminates a lot of those blows, and, you know, those those unexpected blows, the blind side, the blind side blows. But, I mean, you do get the head on uh, collisions, but a lot of times, you know, with the techniques that we're teaching, um, especially, you know, near foot, near shoulder, getting keeping the head out of the play. Um, I think we're moving towards a safer game of football. But again, the component of, you know, a contact sport, you'll never it'll never be like completely injury free. But I think that they're they're, you know, the way the game is governed, that we're moving in the right direction. So for any parent um, that's hesitant about letting their, their child play football, I just say just, you know, continue to do your research. It's all. You know, it's all subjective on, on kind of what you, you know, you know, what you what you're willing to, you know, the risk that you're willing to put yourself in. Again, you know, the, you can get hurt in baseball, you get hurt in soccer, you get hurt in track. I mean, I, I just think, you know, some of those sports, the, the injuries um, aren't as frequent, but um, I love the game of football. And, and, you know, I think it's a it's a sport that not only. Um, not only teaches you a ton of valuable life lessons, but it brings so many different people together from don't, so many different like ethnicities, uh, financial backgrounds, uh, religious backgrounds, political backgrounds, and it brings you all together for one common goal. Like you want to go and win a game, and you know they say the football locker room is probably one of the most diverse places on earth in regards to you know the different people that are there, but it brings us together. So. Um, there are, there are a ton of different, you know, there are a ton of, you know, benefits from playing a game of football. Um, I know the physicality of it. A lot of parents are, you know, afraid of it. But I say just do your research. Um, my opinion is, you know, if, if you're afraid, you know, don't start too early and tackle. Kind of stick with the flag. Um, and, you know, once, once the kids get to, like, middle school age, then you start introducing weights 
and weight training so they can get their bodies, you know, prepared for the physical punishment that they'll be taking. Um, and that's important, understanding, um, you know, just getting your body right. A lot of these kids, they don't have the proper weight, strength and conditioning training um, when they're going out there. So that, you know, because, you know, the stronger you are, the more, it, it, you know, you can prevent injuries with your yeah. strength and conditioning. So um, those things are super important things to kind of think about. Um, but just putting a plan together, I'd say put a plan together, sit down with your significant other, with the, with the child and kind of, you know, put a plan together that you think is that'll, that'll fit best in regards to the, the, their physical, you know, well-being. And I think you'll come out with, you know, a really good plan. But the game of football is continuing to, to you know, continuing to progress in a safely manner. I love it, man. I love it. Well, what what is something, I guess, as um... – you know, as you've seen with some of the students and stuff, what's just as far as um, like when they send their kids to college, right, to play football or whatever, what would you say is something that I guess maybe students that that's going to play football in college or or parents that they don't necessarily realize or take into account? Um, yeah, just certain things, right? Because a lot of times as parents, they're just like, oh, okay, you just, you know, you do your football, you go to school, that's pretty much it. Like, is there any aspect that they might be missing? That you know the I don't know the 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 mental stress at times the physical, so I don't know you know yeah. just from what you've seen. One thing I will let parents and players know: <clears throat> it's a job. Mm-hmm. Like in in college football, and even high school football now, it's a business. I tell people this all the time. I tell my players this all the time. It is a business. When you go to that college and you sign that uh, that letter of intent you're letting the college know i'm going to follow your guidelines i'm going to i'm going to you know run catch lift weights do my school work i'm going to be on time these are all the obligations that i'm going to abide by and then the college is saying we're going to provide a structure for you academically athletically uh mentally emotionally we're going to provide a structure for you to be successful. And when you sign that letter of intent, you're entering into an agreement. That's a business transaction. Yeah. You know, I'm going to do this for you. You're going to do this for me. Okay. We come together. And then now it's about each side holding one another accountable for what they said they're going to do. Whether it's the football program, when they come in and recruit you and all the things that they're saying that they're going to do for you and provide for you, I'm going to hold you accountable to that. And then you got to hold me accountable for the things that I said I'm going to provide. I'm going to be on time. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to take care of my academics. Um, so one thing that I will tell the parents and the players is it it's a business and it's a lot. You got to put a lot of work into it. You know, mm. like people don't understand how long days are for college athletes, especially at the four year level. Some days you'll start at 6 a.m. and you don't leave the b- building until 6 p.m. Um, mm. and it's a it's a ton. It's weight training, meetings, uh, practice. And then after practice, you have more meetings and then you have recovery time and then you have study hall. And then you go to sleep and you wake up and you do that over and over and over again. So it's, you know, it's, it's very important, you know, being a college student um, or even being a parent that's supporting a college student to help them prioritize time. Um, time prioritizing is like super important, but once you get into a rhythm and if you're in a really good program that has a really good system, um, it'll be seamless to you. But, um, yeah, the advice I would say is just to understand that it is a, it is a business. Um, and, um, it's a lot of, it's a lot of hard work. Days are long, um, long days, long nights, but, um, yeah, that's that's the advice I would give them. Just understanding that, especially now that we're entering into, you know, where you can get the name, image, and likeness now. So yeah. it's a, it, the game is evolving, um, especially at the college level, um, to where you can really monetize off of your name, image, and likeness. So understanding that too is super important in order to, you know, you want to maximize your 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 earnings and you want to maximize the time that you, you know, you put into these colleges because they're going to make a ton of money off of you. So you got to find a way to, you know, monetize it for yourself as well. So um, that question can go on and on and on in regards yeah. to the things that um, you should look out for. But overall, that's what I mean. 
from a base le- from a base level, that's what I would say. Just understanding that it's going to be a lot of hard work, and that that it's a business, and you got to approach it as such. Um, because they're investing hundreds of thousand dollars into you being able to go and be at their school and get their education and housing and travel, and they're making an investment in you. So yeah. you know, you make an investment in yourself as well. Try to maximize your potential. Maximize. Yeah. You know, what you can do, what you can get out of them. I tell my guys this all the time. If you can't be used, you're useless. Mm-hmm. So, and when I recruit guys, I tell their parents, we're recruiting you. We're going to use you. Now, it's going to be your job to use us. Mm-hmm. And we're going to provide the platform for you and a structure for you so that you can use us. Yeah. Whether you, you, whether you, whether you utilize that or not, that's going to be on you. Cause we're going to, we're going to have weight training, study hall, practice we're gonna have a lot of different things for you in order to grow you got to use those tools yeah so yeah. um that that's that's the biggest thing just understanding that this is a business and it's uh but it's it's uh it's really transitioning to, to you know where the players are having more and more power you know yeah. as time continue to move forward i like that i mean and, and i was thinking about that too like you said all the stuff you know, just for the stuff you have going on with this, with the uh, athletes and stuff on, on your team, you know, it, it could go all day pretty much depending on what's going on on top of your homework, right? Yep. On top of you studying for a test or whatever. And you said it's so important for you to make sure you, you know, you prioritize everything. And so it made me think as well for you as a coach, as a father, as a husband, how do you um, try to balance that out um, between that is there a balance? Is there anything such thing as a balance for you? Because so it, of- yeah, so it's crazy. Last year I got deep into reading like Tim Grover, uh, his books. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was a trainer for Michael Jordan, Kobe, Dwayne Wade. Um, and in his book Winning, there was a portion of it where he said there is no balance for those who are dedicated to winning. Um, and recently I was listening to a another podcast with Tim Grover was on there and he said something very profound. He said, when a scale is balanced, what number is it on? Zero. Yeah. Yeah. I said, wow, that's very profound. Um, there is, there is no balance. That's why what we talked about previously, when I talked about the sacrifices that my children and my family make last year, there, there are times throughout the week, I wouldn't see my kids. Oh, shoot. Did we, did we lose you? Did we lose you? Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Oh, shoot. Hold on. Did I lose you? Okay. We, we, you back oh. now. Oh, back I'm back. sorry. Yeah, I just had some technical. I don't know what happened there. But yeah, like, sometimes- I, I sound like you in the booth, brother. <laughs> it do right now? Yeah, it sounds like you in the booth. Like your voice yeah. just changed and everything. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm apologize. Um, sorry, y'all. This is this is what happens when you're 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 having a great time in San Diego. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I, I, I apologize, but yeah. So, like I said, um, yeah, there, there there were there were times throughout the season last year that I I didn't you know I didn't see my children. Um, it was one day I, I actually had an opportunity to drop my daughter off at school. And I was like, oh, bye, bye babe. I'll see you tomorrow. She was like, no, you won't, Dad. You're going to be at practice. I'll see you in the morning. I was like, oh, man, crazy. And it, it didn't hit me. It's like, you know, but, again, those are the sacrifices that that they make and that I make in order for us to be, you know, successful and, and to move forward in, in what we want to accomplish as a family. And you hear how I say, like, we – and for us, like, it's not about me, you know, it's about our family. So um, there is no balance. Um, but one thing that I do uh, try to do when I, when I'm done, when I'm away from the game of football, I try to invest all my time into my children and to my wife. A lot of what we do outside of football, um, we travel a lot as a family. Um, anytime that I get away from the game of football, I really just like to, you know, pour into my, 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 my sons and my daughters and my wife and give them all of my energy and focus um, because they deserve it. And, and this game, it, it keeps me really busy. So the time that I do have free, 
I like to, you know, give it to them. But to answer your question, like, there is no balance. Um, And I'm hoping that the work that I put in, that we put in now, um, ultimately when it's all said and done, when I walk away from this game of football, then we can be able to tilt that, that scale, you know, further on the, like now it's time to set football aside and the career side. And now it's really time to pour into my children. And, you know, at that point, my, my grandchildren or, you know, my wife and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, right now there is no balance just to be quite frank. Um, and I wish there was, but that's the, you know, that's the, that's what we signed up for. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I love it though. That's true. Like there, you know, you're not going to have, um, we try our best to try to have some type of balance, but, like you said, the scale ends up, you know, being uneven, which at the end of the day, it has to be because if you want to accomplish things, that's yep. what happens, right? There is yep. going to be sacrifices. Yep. Um, so I guess my, my last question as we close this out is obviously, you know, we talked about you're a coach, you're, you're, you're a father, you're a husband, you're also a strong role model uh, for a lot of these students, uh, maybe even depend on the situation, almost like a father figure type. Um, so my question to you is just, what if you could pick one? It might be hard, but if you could pick one of your favorite thing about being a coach, um, what is that one thing that that is like you know, it's just one of your favorite things when it comes to just coaching this game of football? That's that's funny that you ask. Um, I get a ton of so in 2019, there was a, there was a kid that played for me at Oak Grove High School named Jelani Brown. Um, when I first got to Oak Grove, he was just a disgruntled kid. He was super disgruntled. Um, but yeah, there's a kid named Jelani Brown. He, he played for me at Oak Grove High School. Um, and he was a very disgruntled kid when I first met him. Just didn't take coaching really well. Um, just was, he just, he just didn't want to take any like authority from any other coaches, but built a really, really strong relationship with him. We took a trip to L.A. with USA Football one, one weekend. And during the trip, the drive down, we really got a chance to, like, bond and kind of talk about life and a ton of different things. And I got an opportunity to really get to know who he, like, who he was as a person, really reach him. Um, the, to make a long story short, he went on to, he went on to a junior college. We stayed, in, we stayed in contact. Then he went to University of Kansas and played at the Division One. And just one day out of the blue, I got a letter. And he, it was a letter from him. Um, I guess they did an exercise with the team where they can go and write somebody that had a huge impact on him. And he mm-hmm. sent the letter to me. And in the letter, he was just kind of thanking me for, like, you know, the impact that I've had in his life. And um, just kind of saying, like, you know, I'm part of the reason why he he was where he is. He has his – now he has a degree. He has a job. Like, he's very successful. But it's those things, Sean, that, that really um, – that really makes coaching the game uh, yeah. really worth it. You know, seeing these young men use the game of football as a vehicle to get where they want in life. Like everybody's destination is not the NFL, but if you can use that vehicle to get, you know, free education, um, to graduate college debt free, um, to go on and expand your horizons and meet new people and make different connections and um, really grow and develop not only as a football player, but as a human being, as a father, um, those are the rewards that really make the game, coaching the game worth it. And that's why I think the true victories are you're going to win and lose football games. That's just the nature of, of the business. But yeah. being able to win lives is kind of the most important thing. So I think that's probably, that's not probably, that is the most rewarding thing. The thing that I love most about coaching football is being able to take those players, like we talked about before, with a ton of talent and no discipline, help them cultivate that discipline and, you know, maximize their full potential as human beings. Like this game of football can take you many places and it's taken me many places. I had the opportunity to go to China. I've traveled the country, traveled the world, um, coaching this game of football. And I just want to be able to pass on those blessings and those different, those different um, lessons to these young men. So that's, you know, again, that's, that's ultimately like, you know, my the biggest the biggest thing that I love about coaching the game of football. I love it, man. I love it. Um, I love it. Um, that, as we're getting ready to go, we're getting ready to go. What, am I echoing? Maybe I am. Um, you're fine on my end. <laughs> oh, okay. 
I, I, I got the car alarms and everything going off, the echoes. Listen, well, I truly apologize to everybody. Please don't go and leave the, leave the Yelp review on me or something, you know? <laughs> hey, 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 look, this is a disclaimer. Coach Younger's actions is not affiliated with the Conquer the Chaos. <laughs> you know how they do the things at the beginning of the show. We do not responsible. <laughs> so just do that, man. That's on me. <laughs> oh, we do not I'll represent play. Conquer the Chaos. <laughs> That's funny. Is, is there anything you want to plug in? Um, nah, man. I, you know. I appreciate, I appreciate, you know, you having me on board to have these conversations. I think that, you know, us, especially as African-American men, we, we have to continue to have, you know, these conversations and, you know, continue to provide platforms for, for one another. When you asked me to be on it, I just, there, there was no way I, I could have turned it down. I thought, you know, I definitely love like, you know, supporting, you know, everybody, you know, regardless of race, gender, you know, religion. But, you know, importantly, I think, you know, us as African-American men, we have to continue to create a foundation and uh, to, you know, show, be, be an example to the future that, you know, we can come together, we can work together, um, we can be moving in the right in the right direction and, and, and working to, you know, to be influential in our communities and in our households. We, we can be great fathers. Um, we can be professionals. Um, although I got the car alarm going off during the interview and stuff like that, but, um, yeah, that's, that's the number one thing that I, I would want to plug is, is, you know, just showing my gratitude to you and your wife and conquer, conquer the chaos for having me on. Um, I, I, I feel super blessed to be able to provide, be provided with this platform to tell my story and kind of share some things with your viewers. Um, so I really appreciate you and your wife for having me. Um, I would love to. You know, maybe in the future we'll love to jump back on and, yeah. you know, yeah. minus the car alarms and all that stuff yeah. and really kind of deep dive into some more topics. So, yeah, I appreciate you, Sean. I appreciate all your viewers for being patient with me throughout this mm -hmm. interview process. And um, thank you so much for everything, really. No, nah, man. Uh, um, nah, man uh, it, it definitely is a blessing having you on. Um, yeah, um, I plan on yeah, having, you, plan having you, you know, on again, having, man. You know, on again, man. Again, I apologize, y'all. I, I, I don't know where it's coming from. Um, but, um, yeah, but, uh, we'll do yeah. this again. Uh, we'll do and this like again. always, guys, like you, always know, guys you know, make sure you subscribe, make like, subscribe, and like, before I go, I just want to remind you parents to keep being an inspiration. Never downplay the impact that you have on your loved ones. Have on your loved ones. Come to the chaos. Come to the chaos. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate it.